Ethiopia is a land of beauty and contrasts, but to protect its environment, everyone has to play their part. On the banks of Lake Zwai, a fisherman is preparing for work. Lake Zwai used to be a fisherman's paradise, but now it's hard work for local fishermen. In the capital of Addis Ababa, people lead a modern lifestyle. My name is Yorko Hayaleo. I'm a fashion designer. Almost every morning I wake up with an idea for a new design. Today is a short traditional skirt. Soon, her design turns into reality and goes on display. Salulta is located just 21 kilometers north of the capital. For many years, it has been a green paradise until inhabited by people migrating from Addis Ababa. Zeneba is heading to the middle of Lake Zwai to see if his net has caught any fish. Uncontrolled overfishing has meant the supply has dwindled rapidly. Zenebe is a victim of the deeds of his ancestors. But he himself doesn't see the need to give up fishing for a while to allow the stocks to recover. He thinks, as an individual, his actions don't count. The problem for those wanting to protect Ethiopia's environment is that hundreds of other fishermen on the lake think the same way. The fishermen say this is the only way they can make a living, however difficult it may be. I have a souvenir shop. I sell jewelry, clothes, bags, everything. When Yorkwa sells her goods in her shop, she always gives the customers plastic bags. I use plastic bags because you can find it easily, and it's cheap. It's hard to tell about the environment because all in Addis, we think about just to survive our life, that's it. I know it's bad, but what can I do? I'm a single person. Because so many individuals think like Yorkwa, Addis is plagued by rubbish, especially plastic bags.
Berku cuts down eucalyptus trees to collect firewood, which she sells at local markets. Today, though, she has other thoughts on her mind. Berku has three children and needs firewood for cooking and heating. There are around 80 million people living in Ethiopia. The vast majority live in the countryside and rely heavily on wood that has been chopped down by people like Berku. Such widespread consumption means that Ethiopia's forests are under threat. Foraging for wood is tiring, but Berku's work is not over yet. She needs to prepare dinner for her family. Most of the millions of countryside dwellers do not have electric or gas ovens, so lighting a fire in the house is commonplace. These traditional wood stoves are very inefficient. They generate a lot of smoke and cause severe air pollution. Zanebe uses Lake Zwai as his wash basin. He is one of many who uses detergents which may harm the lake's wildlife. Grazing cattle also drink from the lake. Zenebe thinks his actions don't count. Thousands of people live on the shores of Lake Zwai. There are no controls on how the lake is used. Many others also regularly use detergents and other materials. The collective daily lifestyle of the population poses a significant risk to the environment. Berku also thinks her actions don't matter. Like Zenebe, Berku thinks that she is insignificant. But every day, many wood collectors take their bundles to market in Addis. The result is all too plain to see. Destroyed forests. Yorkwaha has decided it's time to stand up and be counted. I made myself a traditional shopping bag. It seems my worries about plastic bags are gone. The usage of plastic bags in the shops there remains to be solved. I hope it's going to change one day. Yorkwaha is happy to be doing her bit for the environment. When she goes shopping, she refuses plastic bags and uses her own. She's also trying to cut down the number she uses in her shop. She has recognized that as an individual, her actions are significant. Her example is a challenge to us all. Everyone needs to examine their own daily routines. The world is our responsibility. We all count.